Hello everyone, welcome to Bharat Insights. Today I'm back with another interesting video, the most in demand, you know, which I raised, received in most of mediums. Can you make a video on Power BI interview series? So, and here I'm back. So this video, I'm going to talk about the top 10 Power BI interview questions. Not only questions, I'm going to answer how you can give an impact in your interview. So in this, the next upcoming, you know, slides, I'm going to take myself that uh, I am being in an interview and I'm going to answer as per the interview impactful strategies okay so let me go back uh, to the video and this is for the people who are having uh, less than three years of an power bi experience so they are going to face these kind of an interview questions for sure and uh, i'm going to also add few tips and scenarios that you can also impactfully apply in your upcoming interviews as well so if you are going to face uh, just let me know in the comments the first and fundamental question uh, what you, you are going to face is what are the key components of Power BI? So my answer would be like this. So the key components of Power BI is a Power BI desktop. So I have worked with Power BI desktop and this is the primary tool where we create all the Power BI related uh, activities. So we develop all the visuals, we develop all the schemas, we develop all, uh, all the requirements in the Power BI desktop. So this is basically a report creation tool uh, which we use in our projects. And another, another component is a Power BI service. So once the development is over in order to share the end, end report to the clients or to the stakeholders, I just need a power bi service so this is a kind of a licensed version if i want to implement i need to have a power bi service so it is basically an online SaaS for uh, sharing the reports and the next component is we also use is a power bi mobile so which can be used for accessing dashboard on the mobile devices so i have also worked with power bi mobile uh, this is one of the component in the power bi and not only that we have also have another component is nothing but a power bi gateway so Power BI Gateway is basically, so if, if, if I want to connect my on-premise data to the cloud, so I will be using my uh, Power BI Gateways. So this is, uh, we most commonly use this component. And not only that, uh, another component, Power BI Report Server. So there was a scenario for me where uh, I'm working with the government client, uh, that client wants to host their data only on premises, not on cloud. So in that situation, so I have used Power BI Report Server. So these are the key components of a Microsoft Power BI. Okay, so in this way you can able to answer in your interview. And the next question is, uh, can you explain the difference between Power BI Desktop, Power BI Service and Power BI Report Server? Yeah, uh, yes, Power BI Desktop is basically for creating and building the reports. It is basically for the development, I would say. And Power BI Service, once everything is done, you have developed, you have uh, ready to use and share it to the users. So you use publish option, sharing option, collaborate, and uh, you can able to share. Uh, we have to use this Power BI service. You don't dollop anything. You basically use a Power BI service uh, for sharing. And the next we have is a Power BI report server. So this is basically for on-premise uh, for hosting in, in the in, in an internal organization. We use the report server. So report server and Power BI desktop uh, looks like the same, but only features we have is the updating features like monthly ones updates would be released in Power BI desktop and three months once update will happen in the Power BI report server. So that is the only difference uh, we could consider. So this way uh, the differences can be explained. Okay. And the next, the most common, again, the question is, can you explain the DAX functions? Can you give a few examples? Yes, I've worked with several DAX functions in my organization and in my project. So basically DAX is nothing but data analysis expression. Uh, it's a kind of a formula language in Microsoft Power BI. So this is used for calculating, uh, you know, some of the formulas like used for calculated columns, measures, tables, we use this. And uh, I worked with the calendar DAX functions, text DAX functions, aggregations like min, max, some average and we also work with the time related date and also worked with filter DAX functions and there are scenarios are used with related DAX functions and counting all calculate so like this I have used different DAX functions uh, when I'm developing this uh, client related projects uh, example for example a simple DAX function could be if you want to do the sales total sales you can use the sum of uh, sales amount uh, you can uh, implement for this uh, uh, submission so this way i have worked with uh, most of the dax functions uh, in in the in the available uh, project so but yes uh, i usually i'll be referring to the dax documentation uh, where if i stuck in any of this scenario so this way you can able to crack this uh, dax formulas 
The next interview question for us is the difference between the direct query and import mode. Yes, uh, I've worked with uh, both uh, modes. So basically, this way we can able to load our data into the Microsoft Power BI. Uh, one is an import mode, another one is a direct query mode. So import mode, uh, uh, most of my projects I've dealt with uh, uh, import mode only, uh, where data can be loaded into Power BI, which is used for very fast performance like Excel files, flat files, CSV, SharePoint I've used uh, with import mode for a few of the client's requirements. And there are scenarios where I've worked with the direct query as well, where it can be useful for live connecting this to the source. And it is, uh, you will be getting a real time updates, but uh, when the data size, you know, uh, if you want to do refresh based on the source complexity, the performance would be slower on the Microsoft Power BI. So import mode and the direct query can be used based upon the client scenario. If the data size is very low and you can able to choose the import mode, if the data size is increasing like more than one GB or more than that, if you the client is expecting some live time updates you can able to choose the direct query mode so I have worked with uh, uh, both the modes and uh, I even um, based on the drawbacks I can able to suggest my client which mode can be choose and this way you can able to answer and my next question is what are calculated columns and the measure so this is the uh, yes uh, the calculated columns basically used to do derive uh, a client requirements for example it, it can be done with some of the formulas like for example if you want to get a profit and uh, you don't have that uh, column available called profit so we have the sales column we have this cost column so what i will do i'll create a new column called profit is equal to sales minus cost so in the sense calculated column and add-on column is created in my power bi data model it means add-on data is adding so it is it can happen with a row level and stored in the data model so whereas the measure uh, is a different case scenario so it it can be calculated a query time and it is very lighter better for performance basically it, it will not it will just store the record at once and you can able to use it for multiple times whenever we want to use for example total sales sum of uh, uh, sales amount if i have used that as a measure and i can able to use it multiple times uh, there is no add-on column is created like a calculated column so it is calculated on the air so on the fly you can able to get it so the performance uh, if you use measures would be better so uh, if, if you want to improve the power BI performance, always choose measures. We always prefer measures rather than the calculated columns. So this how, yes, I've, I've used calculated columns as well as the measures. So, and the next question, uh, what we're going to get is, can you explain the relationships in Microsoft Power BI? Uh, yes, I've worked with my data modeling concept in Microsoft Power BI, where I'm developing a project. The, after data transmissions, I usually work with the data modeling. So uh, data modeling basically involves connecting all the tables together. I worked with several schemas like Star and Snowflake. So how I can connect my tables together is uh, I use this cardinality called one to many, many to many, and many to one, and one to one. So four cardinalities, I will be using the best preferred cardinality is a one to many uh, one time um, uh, one time the value should be repeated in my dimension table and the many times the values should be repeated in my fact table basically is a real transactions and uh, I prefer as I said is a one to many with a star schema uh, which makes my calculations very easy and performance wise is also better so my data modeling and the relationships will maintain the data integrity and you can able to filter your visuals across so it can be defined using a primary and the foreign keys uh, you should have a common keys between this fact table as well as this dimension table so this way i've worked with uh, uh, relationships in the microsoft power bi and the next question for us is the water filters in microsoft power bi can you explain a few filters yes uh, uh, in microsoft power bi basically if you want to restrict the data displayed in the visuals we apply the filters uh, for example uh, if i want to have in my visual only the data related to uh, the sales uh, sales for a region of uh, a country called Canada. So I will be using a, a visual called visual level filter. So in my whole dashboard, only that particular pie chart can be filtered to show the entire visual sales data uh, for Canada. So we have a concept called visual level filter. If you want to apply the scenario for only that visual, we use this. And there is another scenario if I want to have like page one, page two, page three, page four in my Power BI desktop. So entire uh, uh, sales should show for 2025 in one of the page. So in that case, I will be using this page level filter. So all my details would be applied to the single page. And uh, we also have a report level filter. So where my uh, 
IDs are is equal to one IDs are is equal to zero. So in that sense, if I want to show that original IDs, I will be applying that filter to the entire report where IDs is equal to one. So I'll be getting the real transaction. So report level filter, we use that scenarios. Apart from these three filters, I have also worked with uh, drill through filters and cross filtering. Drill through filters is nothing but uh, if I want to filter from one page, uh, the respective data should be shown in other page. I'll be using this. I'll be drilling down through this filter concept and also worked with the cross filtering functions. Uh, this way I have worked with a lot of filters in Power BI, but basically based on a client scenarios, I'll be applying these filters. And uh, can you explain what do you mean by uh, row level security and how do you implement it? Yes. Row level security is basically called as an RLS in Microsoft Power BI. Once the development is over and you want to share this report to the end users, uh, we use this concept called RLS, uh, use it to restrict the data access for specific users. So one of the scenario where I recently worked is I've prepared my dashboard for a different uh, overall country called India. And in the India, the business is operating in four cities like Hyderabad, Pune, Bangalore and Chennai. So but uh, my I want to share the reports to all the four regional heads of these four cities and the Hyderabad the head wants to see only the data related to Hyderabad and Chennai uh, head wants to see the data related to Chennai but in the back end I have developed with all the four cities together so I use this RLS concept I prepare this uh, city is equal to Hyderabad and they can able to see only the Hyderabad region uh, visibility for them so this way I, I will create a four DAX functions using their roles and I can create a DAX filter for them and I will be sharing four uh, RLS security uh, role level security to the uh, stakeholders so this way i have uh, done one of the real time use case and this can be implemented so basically it is for the data confidentiality and role based access also you can give and customizable filters we can create and uh, it is basically for compliance with regulation like you can only give the sensitive data and uh, with the required uses and simplified management no need to for higher hierarchies for approval and enhanced data security with this rls concept so this way uh, yes uh, rls can be implemented and the next question, uh, how do you optimize performance in Microsoft Power BI? So uh, you have, I have worked with uh, multiple Power BI domains and uh, done a lot of uh, Power BI reports. So the most common issue, uh, most of the clients face, how can you improve the performance and optimize the performance of this Microsoft Power BI reports? Yes, there are different techniques to improvise. So one of the usual technique we follow is uh, we study all the DAX measures uh, using the DAX studio, whichever the visual is taking more time i'll try to optimize that dax measures so we use measures and we also eliminate the calculated columns wherever possible if that scenario can be achieved with the measure i'll create a measure instead of calculated column so what happens in the calculated column usually uh, the data model size is increased so if i eliminate that uh, it indirect directly can increase the performance and um, uh, one other technique what I'll follow is reduce the columns and rows in the data model. Let's say for example, if I'm loading, the, uh, if my data is coming from Snowflake or a sequence over to this Microsoft Power BI, I'll go back to the query and uh, I'll try to use uh, the usage usage factor, uh, whether my all the columns have been used in my report development or not. If, they're not, if there are columns uh, that are not being used in the development, so I'll try to eliminate that column in the source level and uh, if, if uh, my data is not being used the entire rows so i'll try to uh, take the particular year of data like 2025 2024 or 2023 instead of loading all the previous years of data which is unnecessary for the end users right so i'll try to reduce the data model loading at the source level itself so another best strategy what i will use i'll try to use the star schema not snowflake because the star schema is easy for me to drag and drop, do multiple calculations, multiple filters, and the scenarios can be achieved using the star schema. And um, another scenario, what I'll use, as I said, I'll, I'll use the DAX uh, uh, aggregation concept. Let's say uh, whatever the concepts uh, DAX measures have used, I'll try to revalidate again. I'll try to use the performance history of the Power BI report, which of the DAX functions are taking more time. I'll optimize those uh, DAX functions using uh, aggregations. So uh, apart from that, uh, uh, I'll also put more focus on the visuals. Uh, like uh, for example, I don't want to use a complex chart, so like a custom chart. If it is really needed for my client, I'll use it. Otherwise, I'll always stick to the default charts which are available in Microsoft Power BI. And uh, the canvas, uh, everything I cannot dollop in this Microsoft Power BI. I'll try to use external tools called Figma or PowerPoint or Adobe XD. I'll import that theme and on 
top of this theme i'll try to place uh, the visuals because each and every element will take certain load on the microsoft power bi so in this way uh, i'll try to develop all the optimization techniques so which directly improves the performance of my microsoft power bi so there are a lot but uh, yes these are the prime uh, uh, you know optimization techniques which i follow usually so the next question the difference between microsoft power bi tableau and excel have you worked with all these tools uh, the answer is yes so yes i have worked with power bi tableau as well as microsoft excel but my my primary role is uh, microsoft power bi and some of the areas where i worked with tableau some of the areas i have worked with excel so power bi is for well, you know um, the microsoft part and uh, the integration uh, would be very easy uh, with respect to cost effective also the, it is easy and it is uh, follows the dax based mechanism whereas a tableau where uh, the connecting uh, uh, other party tools which involves more cost like advanced visuals are better uh, more flexible but in terms of cost wise which is very high compared to microsoft power bi and uh, excel yes it's it's a fundamental for any organization yes we also use excel which is great for analysis but uh, enterprise if you want to scale your reports the excel is not the suitable option so we migrated to all the excel reports to microsoft power bi so yes uh, to answer your question yes i have worked with excel reporting tableau reporting as well as microsoft power bi reporting i have expertise in all these three uh, tools so based on the scenarios i uh, based on the client requirement we propose the type of visualization tool uh, for the client so this way you can able to answer all your questions and uh, next uh, these are the questions which i usually covered uh, the top uh, 10 uh, most common questions so the simple hack what you can use the explanation what i'm uh, choosing so you can pause the video you can take down the notes if you want uh, use the same methodology or you can customize your own methodology with respect to your work done projects and add most of the times the real time scenarios which always create a better impact to crack interview very easily so hope uh, uh, these are the interview questions and the next uh, I, I want i have also released a lot of different in, in interesting uh, videos in my channel like how to explain your project uh, in in power bi so this is another question and the different strategies i cover time intelligence dax and few of the mock interviews i covered in my channel so if you haven't done just hit subscribe if you watch till the end of this video hit subscribe and like this video comment uh, if you have any doubts comment on this video i'll try to help you there so i'll if i get uh, 50 likes for this video i'll, I'll release the part two uh, thank you so much for uh, watching till the end of this video thank you everyone